back with you, Mike Osti, Mike Vakovacan. It's back here at Brawl Talk here throughout our Sports Now family of networks. And we have a special guest for this edition of the show to get kind of that national perspective. And that is National College Football Writer with the Sporting News and other outlets, Bill Bender. So, Bill, happy to have you aboard. I know we were just talking off the air. We've been following each other for a while. I'm happy to hear that you've been following our network. Uh, we're definitely fans of yours as well. So we should have done this before, but happy to be talking to you now. No, oh, yeah. Thanks for having me on. It's awesome. It's it's week one. It's obviously an exciting time in college football. I know you guys couldn't be more excited. I, I was perplexed about the timing, like full disclosure, being an Ohio boy. I didn't know uh, Pittsburgh guys let Ohio guys on the show. But, but to be clear, like I'm not a Bengals or Browns fan. I'm a huge okay. Green Bay fan I'm, and an OU, Ohio University grad. So, uh, so happy okay. to be on the show. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, right, well, we're gonna we're gonna start. We're gonna get right into this now. Uh, I, I think different expectations for both programs. Neil Browns uh, in West Virginia are starting to are, are are trying to see some growth. Sort of what Pitt has done the last couple of years with Pat Narduzzi. I think is different. Is they want to try to maintain what they've uh, established or got together last year. What is the national perspective of Pitt? They started off in both major polls. Uh, I believe 16 and 17. Uh, I get the outside sense that I, I think people are still a little skeptical of Pitt having arrived as a program, and maybe they were a byproduct of Kenny Pickett and Jordan Addison. What, what is the national sense, do you believe, of um, where Pat Narduzzi has this Pitt program? I think Pitt's getting treated a little bit like Michigan is in the Big Ten. And I, and I can explain that and that, you know, both teams had the breakthrough last year. I, I'm sure you guys saw Desmond's playoff picks yesterday on game. Right, day. right. Of course, <laughs> those are the two teams on there. And, and part right. of that is, so they spent this time having a breakthrough pit, three straight winning seasons. They finally get through, get the Heisman candidate, win the ACC. And what do us national guys do? And, and we're, I'm as guilty of it as anybody. We default right back to Clemson. Oh, yeah, Clemson's going to win the ACC. Pitt's going to compete, but... And we're doing the same thing in the Big Ten. It's, oh, yeah, Ohio State's going to win the Big Ten, but Michigan can compete. And Jim Harbaugh goes through the same questions, which, yeah. you know, for, for Pitt, I think arrived might not be the right word in terms of how we feel about them nationally. But I think they'll be right in the ACC coastal mix. And it, for me, it just comes down to can they go perform in those big games on the road against um, Miami, which has been a trouble spot, and North Carolina, which has been a trouble spot on the road. Yeah, to say the least. And yeah, Pitt is that program that is looking to go on from where they were last year and kind of go to that next level. And Desmond Howard's giving them love, but we'll see if they get that love nationally. They have that big first game. It's not on the road. It's at home. It is in Pittsburgh against West Virginia. And then flipping it from the West Virginia perspective, they are a program that's trying to kind of get back to glory. They, they had their glory days, but they're trying to get back there six and seven, losing a mediocre bowl game last year, not where the program wants to be especially when you sell trust to climb, a climb got to go up. I say it all the time. You can't be falling backwards or even a neutral with a climb. Despite all the chaos around the Big 12, West Virginia looking to do it this year. The schedule's not easy, though, but early on in the season is a little bit easier. They have this big game against Pitt, and it's a road game for West Virginia. So this is an opportunity for Neil Brown to maybe get that staple win, the big-time win that Virginia Tech was last year, but against a better team, a bigger rival that maybe will stabilize and to try to start off the season on the right foot and try to get maybe where Pitt was even last year sooner rather than later and save his tenure at WVU, allow him to be there for the recruiting class, et cetera. What do you think the state of the Mountaineers is right now, though? Because the schedule is tough. A lot of ranked teams at the end of the schedule, there are some teams that aren't normally Big 12 powerhouses that are supposed to be very good this year. Baylor is another team that Desmond Howard given some love that West Virginia will play this year. And W has also laid some eggs against programs that are similar to them in recent years. JT Daniels now part of the fold. Graham Harold now there. It's a lot of a lot of different look and feel around the program, even though last year wasn't so great. But the national vibe, in, in, in contrast to Pitt getting a playoff pick, the national vibe is most national writers I talk to are saying four, five wins, but the fans are saying eight or nine wins. So give me your thoughts really on West Virginia right now. Probably somewhere in between that. I mean, with Neil Brown, I think the, the surprising part is they're seven and eight, 17 and 18 the last three years. And when 
he was hired from Troy. I mean, full disclosure, yeah. I was all about it. I, I He was a rock star coming from Troy. Three straight double-digit win seasons. Had a way about him that I was like, yeah, that's going to do real well in, in Morgantown. Yeah. The way and fits coached. there. Right. I heard yeah, that too. Yeah, the fit. And I always talk about fit with coaches. You have to have a, pro, a fit with your program regionally in college football right. more so than any other sport. Um, so it has been surprising that it hasn't taken off a little bit quicker. Uh, obviously you talked about Harold. I mean, a lot's going to be made of JT Daniels and what this offense looks like. Do they have playmakers on the outside? I mean, is Tony Mathis the guy that can, can get the running game going? So, I'll, I'll, and then they play in a conference where offense is first. So, I mean, to be honest with you, they're not in my top five in the big 12 which is, you know, you don't really consider them a team that can win the okay. Big 12 championship, which is means getting to six and getting to seven wins isn't going to be easy. That that does sound yeah, that does sound bad news for West Virginia fans if that's how it goes, yeah. We both talked about quarterbacks, uh, at least uh, the, the names have come up. Uh, it's ironic that the first game is going to come with two guys from USC. Uh, <laughs> any early thoughts on uh, – Slovis, and we're assuming uh, Daniels, although Neil Braun hasn't announced it yet, uh, it would be shocking if it's not JT Daniels. Right. So, while we're recording this, yeah. Just, just thoughts on uh, you know the upcoming year and the opportunity for both quarterbacks. I mean, it's full circle for both. Obviously, I remember where I was. I was watching when Keaton Slovis stepped in and took the job at USC and, and took it and ran with it and had that huge first season. And the one thing with him the COVID year kind of interrupted his progress. And I don't know if you guys have talked to him about that. I mean, from just a statistical standpoint, it, it, it probably interfered a little bit because he is a guy that completes in the sixties uh, percentage wise. Yeah. It doesn't turn it over a lot. Throws touchdowns should fit in Pitt's offense. I mean, obviously Addison leaving created a hole, but they've got some receivers. I mean, I'm sure you guys know, uh, more about them than I do. Uh, Mumfield in particular, I watch a little, obviously being an OU grad, you know about him from the Mac. So that he should have some guys to throw to. And if they can run the ball with that committee around him, the offense could be good. Will it be as good as it was last year? You're asking a lot when when Kenny Pickett had the year that he had and and obviously might be starting on Sunday at some point this year. Now, in contrast to, to Slovis, who's coming in, that's stabilizing the position, beats out Patty, who's a veteran there. So even if it doesn't work out with Slovis, you have a veteran who's already there. Maybe more of a versatile offense now, incorporating more of the running game as well. But for West Virginia, and Pitt has a new OC, but for West Virginia, it's new life. Neil Brown, you mentioned it. He came from Troy. Points are on the board. He's young, fits in culturally. But West Virginia's issue the last three years has been the offense is just not putting up points on the board. Even with all the, the yards your Deggies put up, and actually that's right up there in the Big 12, the, the points just have not been there. And Letty Brown had a great year two years ago, dipped last year. The offensive line hasn't held enough. JT Daniels has had injury issues. Obviously, the offensive line is going to have to protect him now. But also, Graham Harrell cannot be underrated to this game, to West Virginia's season, to what this means to everything this year in college football bringing the air raid in and Mountaineer fans are familiar with the air raid. Geno Smith ran the air raid, but speaking nationally now, how difficult will it be for any quarterback to familiarize themselves with the air raid, get used to it, be able to run it, get into a season. Will it take a week or two to actually get involved? How much do you think Graham Harold is a factor to all of this? Because regardless of QB, he's the offensive guru now at WU. It's no longer Neil Brown show. It is the Graham Harold show. And how much can Graham Harrell impact things? And what will that offense look like now with Graham Harrell leading the charge, JT Daniels now there, different pieces around. But West Virginia's offense just has not been good enough, needs to get a lot better. But they've done everything they really could in the offseason to make it happen. It's just now about seeing it on the field. Well, I think yesterday would provide a great example for that answer. If you look, watch that Nebraska game with Northwestern where Casey Thompson, obviously a transfer quarterback, comes in. And they and Mark Whipple – Obviously, you guys are familiar with him. Right, right. So I watched that first drive yesterday, and the protection's good, and the receivers are wide open, and he's dealing. You know, five of six on that first drive, which was obviously scripted, I'm sure. And then when you got off the script, by the time you got to the second half, a couple bad reads, a tipped interception here, and and obviously Whipple's offense is pass-heavy. So I think you could draw some parallels with what might happen 
with West Virginia in the first couple games is, you know, if, I, if I'm pit, I'm the script, the opening script will probably be pretty good. It'll probably be plays that they've run. They might have a couple plays where a receiver might pop open for a big gain. And then, you know, once you get past that scripted 10 to 15 plays, we'll find out what it really looks like, you know, how right. he makes a read against the blitz. What's the first third and 12 look like? And, um, do they turn the ball over? Those are things that this wasn't a very good team on the road last year. You know, their only road victories were Kansas and TCU. So <laughs> for that to, you know, I mean, when you're going into pit, I didn't, and I know you guys know. The, the and emotion. in Blacksburg, they go on the road to Virginia Tech right. as well. That's another road game. Yeah, they have the Kansas Townsend game, but these tough games are on the road this year. Right. And, and so when you're stepping into what, you know, emotions are going to be super high on Thursday night. We all get that. Um, yeah. And that that we'll see how he reacts to that. JT Daniels is very interesting to me, though. Uh, just a crazy career arc when you think about it. He started at USC as a freshman, premier program historically. Last year, up until, like, kickoff, there were people that wanted him to start over Stetson Bennett. And right. uh, so now he ends up down in, up in West Virginia with one last shot, so to speak. And I think he'll get better as the season goes on, but there'll be some hiccups early. Frank Cignetti took over uh... – for Mark Whipple, as we know, uh, nobody can uh, discount what Whipple meant for Pickett's career, but Narduzzi, obviously, Pat Narduzzi wanted more balanced. Just your thoughts on Frank Signetti as Pitt's offensive coordinator, the impact he have, and uh, you know, do you, uh, how much of a change do you expect Pitt to have? Because despite him wanting to, I, I guess, get more balance, they did have a success in the style of offense they uh, they run the last couple of years. Yeah, I mean, and, and the pro background's always a thing. You know, I always kind of keep an eye on that when a guy has a NFL background. How's that going to rub off on the quarterback? Will it be a little more conservative? You wonder early as they try to figure things out with the receivers that they have. I mean, by all accounts, I, I read something in a preview from College Football News today where. You know, they're saying, you know, and they do a great job over there. Pete does a wonderful job. So Pete was writing that, you know, 1,500 yards and 20 touchdowns on the ground is reasonable between the committee. If you get that behind the quarterback, hey, you're going to have a lot of success in the ACC. So, um, yeah, I think that offense definitely has a chance to be really good. Is it 40 points? To me, the 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 bar for an elite offense is 40 points per game, and they hit that last year. The bar for – extraordinary generational right. offense would be 50. And I actually right. think Ohio State may hit 50 this year, which would be generational like Alabama did a couple years ago. So I think yeah. if you're anywhere around 35 to 40, you'd be accepted. Talking with in, Bill in Bender total, here. Oh, go ahead, Mike. In total, what uh, when you're looking at Pitt for the season, uh, you can finish this sentence, Pitt won't have a successful year this year if – I like that. Oh, if the road, like what we were talking about earlier, if the road games don't go well, you know, I mean, I think I like their schedule off the start. I always kind of eyeball a schedule and say, okay, what's, what's going to happen here. I mean, helping helps that I think they'll win the first one. We can, you can get a prediction from me later, but I mean, it really comes down to the North Carolina, Miami, Virginia, even Louisville could be a little tricky um, because uh, they've got an experienced quarterback in Cunningham. And one of the things that stood out when you preview the ACC this year is, there are five or six quarterbacks that are going to probably get a look at the next level. I don't, I, right. I'm not going to tell you where I think Leary or Van Dyke or Cunningham or Jerkovic uh, is going to get drafted because I think this season is going to tell us where that's going to happen. We'll have and you back on and we'll do that later. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think, you know, you Lele, it's weird that Clemson's the team to beat and they've got a question mark at quarterback. So right. I, I think if Slava, if Slovis, throws a bunch of picks and it doesn't work out and the road games are bad and the Tennessee game doesn't go well. Right. I mean, we're looking at, you could be looking at seven and five at that point. I don't think it'll get that bad though. Tennessee's really good. I'm, I'm I am looking forward to that game as well. Yeah. And, and that's a difference because you right beginning of the season, you got these two games, you got a rival, even though you're favored against WU and it is at home, you're going to have a lot of West Virginia fans, obviously there talking with Bill Bender here, national college football writer with the sporting news, Mike Fakovic and Mike Osti here. Representing the Sports Now Network as we are previewing the backyard brawl and talking some pit in West Virginia. And what I do want to ask you, Bill, well, I'm going to flip that question first and what Mike asked in terms of 
if it doesn't work out, what? And I'm going to reverse it because West Virginia is coming off a different season than Pitt did last year. If this season does work out for West Virginia and they surprise some people and you're talking about stabilizing a bowl game way earlier in the year and they're competing in the Big 12 and the fans are correct and they're making the media members like us kind of look like we're missing something all off season. What happened? If West Virginia turns this around, they get back to what this program had been as recent as four years ago for the previous 20. Neil Brown saves the, the, the program, basically, and all this works out. What occurred this year? Well, that means the Graham Harrell effect worked. It means that the offense found a running game. That, that They always have a guy or two on the defensive line that can play. It's been the stills in the past and, mm-hmm. and a couple difference makers in the secondary. Um, yeah. And they've had a pass rush at times that, that's kept them at games. That means they, they took care of business, maybe shocked Pitt. Maybe they go to Texas and win because Texas' this season is going to be, whether we like it or not, defined by that Alabama game. So you never know what's going to happen with them after. And then maybe they get into November somehow and they're in the mix against Oklahoma. And then they have played them tough, even though they haven't been able to get a win, obviously. <laughs> right. They A couple of years ago, that was a really good game. So I, I think. And then Neil Brown can really kind of get started and, and go from there. And and these are two programs, obviously. I know you guys probably talked endless, endlessly about all the shuffling around in the offseason that I think in a way programs like West Virginia and Pitt, I don't, because I think the ACC will be around, but they're auditioning for their future in some ways. If there is, if there is. Especially a, WVU, especially WVU. Right, more so WVU, I would say, because. Right. The the super conference model is not going to favor places like West Virginia and Washington State and those type places. So I, I think yeah, that's why these next couple seasons are pretty important for those kind of schools. Yeah, I, I would say to, to say the very, very least. Mike, I just want to quickly add, you, just off of what you just said there, and th- the focus has really been about who knows where this program is going to be in the future because conference chaos maybe hasn't been friendly to West Virginia. They did get in the big 12. It was, it was fine for them being there. They, they made sure they weren't left out. The AC maybe didn't want them at one point. It's all different now. It's all about money. Different things that were issues 10 years ago might not be issues now, but speaking on the present and what we do know, how much pressure do you believe nationally is on Neil Brown this year? This is year four. I slurp the Kool-Aid as well. I know for a fact the program, Shane Lyons, the media, the fans, Coach Don Nalen comes around all the time, sings his praises. He fits in culturally. He's a Kentucky guy. He loves being there. He wants to be there for decades on end. It's rare these days, but he wants to. Everyone loves him. But 17-18, and 18, without a big-time win, your only big rivalry win is Tech, and then Virginia Tech was basically horrible after that game. You have this game coming up and a tough schedule coming up. The recruiting class is wonderful. It's top 30, 35, even with how bad the program has been the last year or so. How much pressure is on Neil Brown, though, to show something wins and loss-wise very soon, or maybe he won't be around for the future of this program and to kind of get the fruits of any of that labor? Well, just looking at it, and it's a name that pops up. I'm, I'm looking at their list of seasons right now. I mean, Frank Signetti the last one that had four straight losing seasons. And – he was fired and that's how they got to Don Nealon. And um, yeah. this would be four straight and Rich Rod didn't have that. I mean, Bill Stewart, looking back at it, it's like he won nine games every year and that wasn't good enough. It was Virginia at the time because yeah. they went. I mean, Rich Neil Brown got the one bowl win a few years ago, but yeah, when they got it in the COVID year. So it's a little different, but yeah. Right. I mean, Oh wait, they did have a winning season. They, they had the COVID year winning season. Well, right. So it wasn't yeah, so, well, I take that back then, all of that. But, I mean, <laughs> three losing – okay, let's do three losing seasons in four years. Um, and they get impatient. So, I mean, you don't want to have that. Um, and I think if they go four and eight this year, yeah, the place is getting antsy. I mean, go back to yesterday. I mean, there are people openly talking about no, Scott Frost getting fired, which when he was hired at Nebraska, I would never dream that would have happened. Yeah, he's so, a Nebraska guy. Yeah. But but and then it always but here's my thing that I always say when they talk about that is okay, if you're gonna get rid of Neil Brown, then who? Exactly. Who's taking my job. It's yeah. is that a job where you can pull somebody in? I, I think they might I'm of the opinion you give a guy five years. So you give a guy five years, and then if it's still five and seven, four and eight, and you're not improving in the skill position places that you need or in the position groups that you need to improve in. 
then you can look at changing it. So yeah, it's okay. a big year for him. Okay. Uh, Pat Narduzzi has had five years before we get into prediction. Uh, just one thing about Pat Narduzzi. Uh, he, I, th- I think uh, he was feeling it prior to the last couple of years. He, he, he wanted to turn things around. Um, I think they were average at best uh, in the ACC. And then things started to turn around uh, two years ago. Uh, and then last season, what is the national perception of Pat Narduzzi as a coach? He came here as uh, you know, obviously his reputation was built as the defensive coordinator at Michigan state. Uh, has, has he gained uh, a lot more respect nationally over the last couple of years or is it, has it always been there or is there still some questions about him? What, uh, you know, what's the national take on, uh, you know, the job Pat Narduzzi has done and the type of coach he is. I like dealing with Pat. I've had conversations with him, whether it be at ACC media day, um, you know, on the phone, whatever, when he's talking about players, I like guys like him. And I say that, and yeah, mm-hmm. he, he'll, he'll say what's on his mind and right. people, it, it runs viral sometimes, you know, his big 10 comments were a popular topic <laughs> over in India a couple, yeah. about a month ago, but I'm sure. I look at it in terms of, um, you know, I like coaches like that, that are honest. He stuck it through. Yeah. There were some kind of 500 seasons. Yeah. I'm sure Pitt fans would get on him about some losses, but I also feel it from the perspective that he had this year. You know, you're coming off that ACC championship. You have to deal with the Jordan Addison thing that was a huge story. I mean, and I kind of feel for Pitt on that one because I'm like, this kid, that's your job is to develop this kid into a Bolitnikoff award winner, and then he just goes. So You did it. You did the job, and right, yeah. Yeah, you, you did the job, and you didn't get the reward of another right. season with him. So I think those things, you know, they, they have to be taken into account. And if – Pitt, I think some analysts are going to Miami real quick, you know, as far as the team that can challenge from the coastal and, and be this program and be the U when the reality is Pitt's been a probably, while. Yeah. In a while. <laughs> they haven't won an ACC title. So right. I think Pitt's going to have something to say about that. And I honestly think North Carolina will too, because they, um, bad year last year, but Matt, they still have Mac. And I think they're actually going to be a little bit better this year. I also think kind of what you're saying about Pat Narduzzi and his tenure there, that might be a lesson to West Virginia on dealing with Neil Brown. And it's not been good enough yet, even for what you expect in your program. But yeah, who else would you get? If you cut bait now, he's still very young. Maybe you give some rope, especially that recruiting class in. Who knows? Obviously a popular guy down there. Maybe he could turn it around and you get through some of that that trek there because he didn't inherit a great situation, kind of what Narduzzi did. They let him they let him go. He dealt with people saying he should be fired for three or four years, and all of a sudden last year happens, and obviously now uh, there, there's tons of rope there. Bill, I do want to get your your official pick then and official score prediction, all that. You kind of teased it and said you do think Pitt's going to win this game, but the spread went all the way from multiple touchdowns to now. I believe we're standing at seven. That would be pretty impressive, I would think, for West Virginia coming off the years that they've had on the road to open up their year. Not not the moral victories count, but if they make this where they're only losing by, by three, six, that's something. Whereas Pitt needs to defend what they did last year, even though they're both running new quarterbacks out there, new offensive game plans. These teams look different. It's week one. Big time national for college football. It's really cool for the rivalry, the rebirth. But there could be some growing pains in week one. How do you think this game is going to unfold? Right. Um, you know, um, again, the emotion of it, haven't seen each other for a while. This game's going to remind me, I think I've referenced Nebraska like four times. I should go on one of their shows. Um, it reminds <laughs> me of, of no, 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 I don't want to go on one of their shows today okay. and talk about Scott Frost. For I'm now. sure. Um, right. You know, I, I, so it, it's going to remind me a little bit of Nebraska, Oklahoma last year, where the, you know, when you have old rivals that get in the same house, they haven't been together for a while, emotions are going to be high. I think both teams could be tight early. Um, our, I'm, I'm even giving you a little steal here. So our picks will go up tomorrow. I picked Pitt 29 to 23. So just under the okay. spread. I could okay. see a backdoor cover there late, uh, something like that. Okay. But um, for those gambling types out there. But you, know, <laughs> yeah. it, you, you said it. We've talked about it. Some of it comes down to the new offensive coordinators feeling out the game. And I just think Pitt's got more talent, an offensive line they can rely on a little bit better. I really want to see Kalijah Cansey play because I'm going to be honest again. I I probably haven't watched enough of him, but saw him 
to turn up on enough all American list that, uh, yeah, I'm going to watch him a little bit closer too. So I like the Panthers to win 29, 23. That might not be enough points for you guys, but, um, you know, a win's a win at that point. Mike, yeah, you have anything uh, else for Bill? Uh, just in the last show we did, uh, I previewed this yesterday or didn't preview it, but I gave my, yeah. I, I just think the difference in the game is going to be the lines, uh, just with Pitt, uh, the experience they have over a hundred combined starts on their offensive line, uh, defensive line. They're going to have, they have at least three NFL players on their line. And I, I just think by the fourth quarter, I think a game might be close to halftime. And then, um, I, I just think Pitt gets after JT Daniels, and I look for that to be a uh, you know two touchdown, 17, 14, 17 point game. I just think Pitt will uh, physically wear him down on uh, both lines. Yeah, both and guys. I do think I do think Pitt's also going to win, but I kind of am in a little closer boat to kind of where you are, Bill, than than Mike, who does eventually have this being a blowout. But I do think kind of to take a page off of it sounds like great minds are thinking alike here. I do think we could have. Rivalry rebirth, everyone's excited, tons of excitement, and then a 15, 20 minute kind of slow mm -hmm. simmer. And then all of a sudden, a big play happens and something blows up. And also, I do think as well that you could have a situation where Pitt maybe only scores 30 points in this game, but the offense then explodes the next week or the week after, the week after that, because they're getting better as the season progresses. These are new quarterbacks and new systems. And even from the West Virginia perspective, the, if they actually put up 23, 24, like you're saying, that could be kind of a glass half full for this game just offensively because, again, this is air raid. This is new offense, new new coach, new QB, only a few months. JT's only been there since May. It could go the whole other negative direction too, but you might not really know how good these offenses are, especially West Virginia, until week three or week four. And then the schedule gets a lot tougher. But that is the only negative of this being week one. You may not in any way see these teams at their best, especially early, even though this is the game the national is going to showcase them and you got the rivalry back. Yeah. And well, the thing I saw too is um, for the last five, four points or less. I mean, I know they haven't played forever, but like, yeah, these games can be tight. So, you know, I, like I said, the emotions of it and, you know, Pitt could be winning 29 16 late. And maybe West Virginia throws one in late or something. And that's that's for the betters, though. But I do think Pig gets right. – and that's why I don't bet. So <laughs> – um, because figuring that out, you're only going to get yeah. yourself a headache. But, right. yeah. And, um, you know, the only thing, other thing I had uh, about Pitt that I, I, I do have to tell you guys this story since I have you. Um, I told Pat a couple years ago, I said, you know, you need to get down to Pickerington. That's where I live. And start getting some players because we have this high school pipeline. So – he hires Ryan Manilak, by the way, who was the first NFL player in this town. And then um, you guys got to commit from Rasheem Biles. I'm Rasheem telling you, Biles, yes. If you hold on to him, he is off to a special start here the last couple of weeks at Central. I think he has three interceptions, four touchdowns. Um, a truly special player on the way to you guys from Pickerington here. Yeah, two. Well, he has two touchdowns. We ran a story on it today. He. Uh, Two defensive touchdowns in the first two games at linebacker, 180 yards. I did see that on PSN, yeah. The other one was before that. So uh, that could be one another one of Pitt's uh, under-the-radar recruits where he might not have received a ton of ton of offers, but by the end of his recruiting year, those offers, mm -hmm. uh, teams will be start pulling at him to, to try to flip him. Interesting you bring up Ohio, too, because I do know that – the weird thing for West Virginia, Dana Holgerson kind of got out of worrying about Ohio, basically didn't try to recruit in Ohio at all. And Neil Brown hasn't dipped enough in there. But I know from some others that we've had on show, some other national writers, Mike Farrell and a few others have brought up that if West Virginia wants to become the regional power again, get back into Ohio. There's no reason not to recruit there. It's not that far either. So will they get back in there too? Because that hasn't really happened as much. Their top recruit, like a Rodney Gallagher or something like that, that's Whippeal. They're going at the Western PA kids, which you got to do. But why not go to Ohio too? So why they're not doing more recruiting in Ohio like Pitt is, is a question mark for the future of the program. Bill, I know I can speak for Mike for sure. We definitely appreciate the time. This was fun. This was great. We'll definitely do this again. So uh, we definitely appreciate it, man. Hey, sounds good. I'll talk to you guys soon. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So that was Bill Bender, national recruiting writer with the Sporting News. Mike Fakovic and Mike Oste. We got the backyard brawl. Again, the pit coverage at Pittsburgh Sports Now, the West Virginia coverage at WV Sports Now. It's We're all going to see. We're going to see it on the field. It's all going to be on the field. We're going to be able to see if we're right, we're wrong, or what's going on on the field, and then the rest of the season as well for both of these two programs.